With a humble childhood in one of Havana, Cuba's poorest districts, Carlos Acosta rose to fame as an international ballet superstar. His stellar athleticism, dramatic range, and dynamic stage presence made him one of the preeminent male dancers of the 1990s and early 2000s. A complete dancer, he had it all, with an overwhelming array of gorgeous turns, high leaps, with numerous innovations allowing him to stand out from the crowd. This video focuses on Carlos's acrobatic solos in the prime of his career, demonstrating his exceptional athletic prowess. A brief bio before getting to the video. Carlos was the 11th child of an impoverished family in one of Havana, Cuba's poorest districts. His father, Pedro, a truck driver by trade, feared that the over-energetic Carlos would run into trouble on the neighborhood streets. He persuaded him to take up ballet at the National Ballet School of Cuba, which would teach him discipline and also provide a daily free lunch. His big break was in 1990 at age 16 at the prestigious Lausanne Ballet Competition, where he won the gold medal. Here's Carlos looking back on his significant achievement. This was the event that changed my life. And this event really marked for me a, a before and an after. I came back after and then everything changed. I began to, to perform roles a, a, you know, in solist mm -hmm. uh, and dance with the leading ballerina. I mean, this event is just, you know, it, it was the, the most crucial event in my entire career. At age 18, Carlos joined the English National Ballet as a principal dancer for the 1991-92 season. After a short stint at the Cuban National Ballet, he joined the Houston Ballet under artistic director Ben Stevenson and danced there from 1993 to 1998. Expressing a need to expand and grow further as a dancer, Carlos joined the Royal Ballet under Anthony Dow in 1998, where he danced leading roles in the company until his retirement in 2015. He was a frequent guest artist during that period, appearing at major companies including American Ballet Theatre, the Bolshoi Ballet, Paris Opera Ballet, and Australian Ballet. In 2020, Carlos was appointed director of the Birmingham Royal Ballet. The first variation is from the Diana and Acteon pas de deux, probably in Havana in the 1990s. This pas de deux, presented frequently in galas and competitions, is a showpiece for bravura technique. This video shows off Carlos's full bag of tricks with several unique innovations. Take a look at the video and I will be back with commentary. Carlos opens with a big double cabriole derriere, which is a beating step to the back. Notable is his height and separation on his beats with great articulation. What follows is a kind of rival Todd with his right leg bent, which is the same jump Mikhail Baryshnikov did at the end of his Corsair solo in the turning point. Rival Todd is a step in which the dancer revolves one leg around the other, landing on the same leg that is taken off from. For his turn section, he does turns in second position with his leg to the side into well-controlled turns in attitude derriere with his leg bent behind him into a wide open fourth position. In real time, it is difficult to capture the nuances of Carlos's technique. Here is a still from his first turn in second position, demonstrating his superb placement honed through countless hours of studio work. As he is en face to the front, note that his supporting leg is turned out in plie, while his working leg is properly to the side, turned out in second position with a nicely stretched foot. The still shows his muscular definition, particularly his working leg quadricep, a product of countless plies. Importantly, his upper body is aligned with his lower body, with hip 
hips and shoulders square to the front with arms in second position to the side. Less proficient dancers miss some element, such as turned in legs or hips and shoulders, not in sync, that makes the step less visually appealing and more difficult to execute. This is the position that dance teachers strive for in their students. He ends his turn section with six gorgeous en dehors pirouettes that end by slowly lowering his working leg into fifth position. Many dancers begin pirouettes with a very wide arm carriage, such as Baryshnikov and, to a greater extent, Daniil Simkin, who was the subject of my last video. Carlos exemplifies the Cuban school, starting much closer to his first position, which is held closer to his chest. He has great control and finishes when he runs out of steam after six turns. Note his great turnout in a very high retouré, which is a hallmark of the Cuban school. Next is a funky step that is a cross between a sisone and a touron layer. A sisone is a leap off of two feet to one foot, typically with a split of the legs. A tour is a turning jump off of two feet. He does the step with great flair and energy. Let me know if you have thoughts on the name of the step or have seen it before. Next is a standard double tour in retouré. Carlos finishes with four nice turns to a double tour off of one leg to the knee. Doing a tour off of one leg is very difficult, requiring great momentum from the arms as they go overhead to provide lift. In real time, it looks like he does two turns in the air. In reality, he takes off to the back and lands after about one and a quarter turns as he quickly goes to the knee. This is a tough step, particularly at the end of a physical, tiring solo. Take a look at his coda and I will be back. Carlos starts with a 540 Rivoltad, known simply as a 540 in the West. This step comes from the martial arts. Most dancers employ the 540 after momentum-generating steps, such as barrel turns. Carlos's 540 is thrilling, given that he does it with little preparation and then bam, into a big leap with the right leg whipping over the left. Very impressive. His left leg is bent as his right whips around. Other dancers like Daniil Simkin employ a straight leg. After a jeté entrelacé with beats, he does two coupé grand jetés in attitude, finishing with a 540. On to his next variation. Carlos finishes with big leaps in retouré, with an exaggerated side bend, an interesting character variation. Then a smooth double ensemble, followed by a character soda bosque. A soda bosque is a turning step from one foot to another. He does this with both legs bent, making it a non-standard variation. Next is Carlos in the acrobatic La Corsaire variation, a favorite segment in ballet competitions and galas. The undated video is from a performance in Japan. Take a look at the one minute video and I will be back with commentary. He starts his variation with the Corsair Soda Basque, a common step in this and the Bronze Idol solo from La Bayadere. The step has the same mechanics as a classic Soda Basque, but with both knees bent instead of one. 
The dancer starts from the downstage corner and does a series on a diagonal, each landing in a lunge after one and a half turns. The basics of the step is not that difficult, but getting it as big, precise, and coordinated as Carlos, particularly the height and timing of the arm positions, is the difficult part. Many dancers attempting this miss some aspect or another. At the end of his first pass, he does a funky step. I'm not sure the name of the step, but it's sometimes referred to as the Peter Schofis jump, named after the famous Danish dancer of the 1970s who popularized it. Carlos takes off from his left foot. His chest faces the corner with one and a half turns, with the left foot sweeping in front as he lands on his right foot. Here's Daniil Simkin with the same step. Let me know your thoughts on the step. After transition steps, he does turns in second position to very smooth six pirouettes with legs sweeping in front at the end for added flair. Then seven pirouettes with a slight bend of his supporting leg. Both turns are superb with tight arm positions throughout his turns and excellent turnout in retouré. His next section is a grand jeté en manège with two double soda bosques breaking up the jetés. Noteworthy is his effortless leaps, never strained. He ends with a double tour to the ground. In another Corsair on YouTube, he did a coupé jeté cloche en tournant rather than jetés en manège. A jeté is a leap from one foot to another and a cloche is a swinging motion with the legs. I prefer the jeté cloche segment, done with great pizzazz. It is common for dancers to swap segments in Corsair, playing to their perceived strengths at the time. On to the coda. Carlos starts with a jeté cloche. He starts his leap as if to do a standard jeté with left leg in front, but then switches his legs in the air. Instead of his left leg landing, he switches legs so that his right leg is in front, landing on that leg. His innovation is that he bends his right leg, similar to a jeté développé, making it seem as if he is walking on air. He then pops into a quick whipping 540 with limited preparation as in the Diana and Acteon solo. Then barrel turns, more formally called tour de ran. In another Corsair, he does jetés with a split leap thrown in, called a grand forte sauté, which I prefer. On his final turns in second, he does a very difficult turn, in which he does two consecutive turns in second and, without coming down, pulls into a delayed retouré three turns with right hand overhead. Very challenging. He completes the turns with four turns in retouré, with his working leg sweeping in front as he goes to the knee. This was probably not the ending that he planned at the start of the turn, but it works. The hallmark of a great dancer. Carlos Acosta's life story is compelling. Growing up in poverty to dancing on the great ballet stages of the world, his stellar technique combined with raw athleticism, range, and creativity made him one of the great male dancers of his generation. Thanks for tuning in.